I'm Debbie Sterling and I'm the founder of Goldie Blocks. We create books and toys and games uh, really aimed toward girls anywhere from age four to nine to teach them at a young age what engineering is and teach them about invention and solving problems and hopefully inspiring them to grow up and want to build the future. I was an engineer at Stanford and most of my classmates were male. In creating Goldie Blocks, that was really my desire, was to give girls the toy that I wish I'd had growing up. When I went to get advice from toy store owners, they all kind of looked at me and said, hmm, it's a noble cause and a noble idea, but this will never sell. So I decided to go up on Kickstarter. I needed to raise $150,000 to go into production and actually reach the goal in the first four days. Before we knew it, Goldie Blocks had gone from a Kickstarter campaign to a toy on the shelves of Toys R Us nationwide in less than a year. The reaction we've gotten has been so incredibly validating. We entered this competition run by Intuit called the Small Business Big Game Challenge. We ended up winning a 30 second spot in the Super Bowl. I remember seeing that commercial go live and it was incredible. It felt like a history making moment where these little girls had made it to prime time. To put this out in the world and to get such a strong reaction, it proves that people do want this, that parents do want more opportunities for their girls. And on the other hand, I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. To think about how many girls we could impact around the world, it's what gets me up every morning. Hi everybody, it's such a pleasure to be here. This is my very first time in Austin, Texas. <laughs> and I've spent the last two days here now having an amazing time and I've learned one thing that Texas women are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> So it's an honor to be here, and I'm so happy to share my story of Goldie Blocks. I'll begin uh, at the very beginning. My senior year of high school, I had a math teacher suggest that I pursue engineering in college. And the moment she said that, I looked at her like she had four heads. I thought, engineering? Why would I want to be a train driver? This woman is crazy. But. Sure enough, I followed her advice. In my freshman year at Stanford, I took a mechanical engineering class. I, in that class, I finally learned what engineering was for the very first time. I was learning that engineering is the basic, simple machines behind everything in our world. All of the technologies that we use every day, the products that we consume, these are all built by engineers. The problem is that over 80% of engineers are male and I was one of the very few women in that engineering class. I stuck with it even though it was a challenge being a minority. A lot of times I was working on group projects where my male classmates kind of dismissed my ideas and were bummed that they got stuck with the girl in their group. But I knew that I had to stay with it because to me engineering was this empowering skill set where you could really invent anything that you dream up in your head. And when I graduated with a degree in engineering, it was the proudest moment of my life because it was challenging and I achieved it. And when you achieve those, you take those risks and you stick with it, you learn that you can really be invincible and do anything. After graduating one day, I was talking with a girlfriend from my program and we were wondering why there are so few girls and women in engineering. And she said, well, when she was a little kid, she grew up playing with her older brother's construction toys. And even though she would have preferred dolls, she had three older brothers and her parents weren't buying any more toys, so she was stuck with those. And those toys got her building and tinkering and got her interested from a young age in engineering. And because of those toys, she said, they made her want to be an engineer. And I sort of scratched my head and thought back to my childhood. I grew up with a little sister and we played with dolls and ponies and makeup and dress up and we never played with construction toys. We were told those were boys toys. And I wondered that, why, why is it that dolls are for girls and boys play with building sets and 
maybe that has something to do with girls and women not being interested in those fields. So I started to do some research into it. And I found actually that construction toys help develop spatial skills, which are really critical in engineering. And construction toys have often been led by characters like Handy Manny and Bob the Builder and Sid the Science Kid and Bill Nye the Science Guy. Engineering was a boys club, and that boys club was starting when we're as young as three and four years old. So from that moment, I knew this was my lot in life. This was my opportunity to take my engineering degree and put it to use to try and invent a product that would inspire little girls. Kind of the toy that I wish I'd had growing up so I could have known what engineering was a whole lot earlier than I did. So I started doing research, trying to get to the bottom of it. Why is it that construction toys have been so popular with boys? And after doing months and months of research, I went and bought construction toys and would sit in the homes of families and observe little girls playing with them. And I'd watch them get bored after a little while. So I asked them, well, what is your favorite toy? And time and time again, this funny thing started to happen where the little girls would say, well, I love this book. Can we read this story together? And I remember sitting in the living room with this five-year-old girl, and we've got a book in our lap reading and a construction set on the other side of the room. And I came up with my aha moment. What if we put these two things together? What if I started writing stories about a girl engineer named Goldie Blocks and she would go on adventures and solve problems by building simple machines. And as girls follow along with Goldie's stories, they get to build what Goldie builds. And maybe I could use this to leverage girls' very strong verbal skills to get them to help build their spatial skills. Well, this idea I believed in so strongly that I took the leap and I quit my job I had enough money in my savings account to give myself one year to pursue this dream. And I just told myself if it didn't work out, I could always go get another job. But this was one of those couldn't stop thinking about it, eat, breathe, sleep, this Goldilocks idea. I had to give it a try. I didn't have a lot of money, but I had enough to start making simple prototypes out of stuff I found around the house. These are some of the pictures of my original prototypes. They were made out of thread spools and clay and ribbon. And I hand drew these stories of Goldie and her friends building machines. These were very ramshackle prototypes, to say the least. But they were enough to put them in front of kids and kind of get my ideas uh, into a working prototype and get feedback. And I started to find, after doing these play tests with kids, that the concept really worked. That once, as soon as I gave girls the story, it made them want to build. Whereas building for the sake of building, not so much. Girls want to know why. Who are we building this for? Who's involved? Where are we? What is it about? <laughs> it kind of rings a bell, right? But it made a lot of sense. Uh, and after doing a bunch of prototype tests and kind of months holed up in my apartment like this crazy inventor hermit, I finally had something that I knew worked, and I was so excited. I packed up my prototype, and I got on the first flight to New York City, where I brought it to the Toy Fair, which is kind of the world's biggest toy industry show. And this was my chance to show it to toy industry veterans and get their feedback. And I remember going into this big toy trade show, just thinking, you know, this is going to be so fun and so creative. There's going to be young people and kids, and it's going to be like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. And I walked in there, and to my surprise, it was a bunch of old men in suits. Very male-dominated. And I thought engineering was male-dominated. Well, welcome to the toy industry. And I walked around kind of booth to booth, trying to get advice from people who've been in it. And something strange started to happen where they all kind of looked at me with the same reaction. They told me, you can't fight nature, that girls don't want to be engineers. They don't like building. Girls like dolls and 
that's just the way it is. And I remember at that moment feeling really dejected. They took me by the arm and they walked me through the show and they said, Debbie, this is what sells. Your idea may be noble, but it's never going to go mainstream. Girls like dress up, they like pink, they like pop stars, and, and you know, that's what they want. And I can understand that. I was very excited this morning to get my Texas hair done. So, you know, I, I get it. Uh, but, you know, to me it still, it really hurt because I know there are so many girls out there just like me who you know, may like the princess and dress up stuff, but they have more potential than that. Uh, they may have hidden talents, and I know that girls are so multifaceted. We're capable of so much more, and we don't des deserve to be put in this pink box that the pink aisle tells us what it means to be a girl. So I left the toy fair feeling a little nervous because I had just quit my job and was basically told by the entire industry that my idea was never going to sell. But I didn't give up. And the next thing I did was I attended a conference uh, kind of just like this, where there were about 100 people who wanted to change the world through social entrepreneurship. And after spending months kind of holed up building these prototypes, I went to this conference and for the very first time, I got up in front of a crowd of 100 young people and I told them my idea for Goldie Blocks. And everyone in the room exploded and jumped to their feet and they all wanted to help. And for the first time I realized that maybe the toy industry had it wrong and that maybe I really was onto something. And my lonely days of trying to invent this product in my living room were over because after that conference these people started showing up to my house every day <laughs> and we would spend hours tweaking my prototypes and going around testing them on kids and I suddenly found myself with this amazing support network and we egged each other on to go out and find that advisor that that person you know could help you that maybe you don't think they'd ever give you a minute but if you ask them for coffee again and again They'll meet with you and they'll, they'll help you. And when you're really passionate about it, putting yourself out there and creating this tribe of people who want to be a part of something bigger, that was the shift for me. And this group of people that I met at this conference helped me take my idea and put it out into the world on Kickstarter. I knew that the toy stores from the toy fair didn't want to buy it, but I thought you know maybe parents would. So I made this Kickstarter video, put it up on the website, crossed my fingers that we could raise $150,000 to take Goldie Blocks into production. And luckily, people believed in it, and we actually reached our goal in only four days to make Goldie Blocks a real toy. Then we had to figure out how to make the toys, which is a whole nother story. <laughs> but once we got it going, we started shipping these toys to our very first customers. And that was the moment where I really knew we were onto something. We had girls from all over the world proclaiming that they wanted to be engineers and inventors like Goldie and building all kinds of contraptions, tearing their living rooms upside down, grabbing pieces of anything they could find to build their inventions. Uh, but the craziest part was after this Kickstarter campaign, all those toy stores that said no, they started to call and say, what is it, this Goldie Blocks I keep hearing about? My customers are asking for Goldie Blocks. And before we knew it, we were on the shelves nationwide of Toys R Us just six months after our Kickstarter campaign. Then, Then this kind of scary thing started to happen where, oh no, we're in Toys R Us nationwide, but we have a marketing budget of literally about $5. What are we going to do? <laughs> but we had this passionate community that had helped make our company a reality. So we reached out to our Kickstarter backers and we said, we've got to tell the world that we've broken into Toys R Us. Let's do it through a video. Let's literally break into Toys R Us. <laughs> and disrupt the pink aisle. And 
So our Kickstarter backers ended up meeting us at a Toys R Us parking lot. No, we did not have permission. But we set up a camera crew and we snuck into the store and we had the girls raging through the pink aisle. And this video that we put up on YouTube ended up going viral and the product started to move at Toys R Us. So we started making more videos. This one had a giant Rube Goldberg machine made out of princess toys. And again, we didn't have a big marketing budget, but we had a mission and a message that really resonated. And this video got millions of views and more and more people started talking about Goldie Blocks and it was coming up at the dinner table. And when we found out about this opportunity to win a free commercial in the Super Bowl, we were one of 15,000 small businesses that applied. But because we had so many fans and supporters who believed in us and voted for us and told their friends to vote for us, we ended up winning. And here is our Super Bowl commercial. Congratulations, Goldie Blocks. Intuit QuickBooks is proud to have put your small business on the big game. And after that Super Bowl commercial, we've now gotten the opportunity to start expanding internationally and building a really great team of artists and engineers and writers and creative types who have helped us create now expanding and doubling our products line and pieces and stories. And the, the part for me that is so incredible is the impact that we're going to be able to make on the millions of little girls around the world who I know are just like me, who didn't know what engineering was, but had, had it inside them, had the ability to do so much more than be a princess. Thank you so much for having me.